So y'all that don't know me, uh, Corey Klein is my name. I'm a lay pastor. And uh, all the guys are at that dirt retreat in Hondo doing God's work. So they're doing a really good job too. Brian talked a little bit about it. But uh, that's, a, that's a really cool deal. If y'all haven't been, any of you men that haven't been, check it out. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about prayer and uh, specifically what God's Word says on how to pray. <clears throat> so I know that some of y'all already know how to pray. You're, you're really good at it. And, and usually you can tell because those people are pretty happy and they're pretty at peace because they know how to pray. And, and you know, God bless y'all for, for understanding how to do that. But I know there's some people out there that that could use a little bit of help. That doesn't mean they don't know how to pray at all. It just means they could use a little help in certain areas. And there's some people out there that don't know how to pray at all. I know that from working with uh, some of those kids, too, because they're new to it. And uh, when you put them on the spot, you say, hey, will you pray for us? They're like, you know, <laughs> they almost wet themselves, which it wouldn't be good. <clears throat> but um, so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about how we can how we can talk to our, our Heavenly Father. And so I'm going to start out uh, in the book of Matthew. Um, and we're going to be in chapter 6, uh, starting in verse 5. But <clears throat> what this is about is what Jesus is talking to his disciples and to his students. They've asked him, say, Jesus, tell us how to pray. They ask him specifically that question. So that's why I want to start there. <clears throat> So Jesus tells him, starting in uh, verse 5, he says, When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues everywhere, or <clears throat> synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward that they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. And when you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need, even before you ask Him. And then He says, pray like this, and we're going to pray this prayer just as Jesus asked, so if y'all will pray it with me. He says, Our Father in heaven, May your name be kept holy. I'm going to read out of this version, but y'all know it. Say it the way you want. <laughs> uh, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we've forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Amen. All right, so that was, that was Jesus telling us, look, this is the way y'all should pray. And does it mean that we've got to pray that word for word every time? I don't know. I, I, I didn't get to ask, ask that question, but when I'm looking at that prayer and just kind of breaking it down, so he starts out our Father in heaven, right? So he's, he's naming it and claiming it from the, from the get-go. You know, uh, the, the first commandment, he's saying... You are my God, the God in heaven. So he's telling them that right up front and making no mistakes about what he believes. And then he says, keep your name holy. May your name be kept holy and, and powerful. We know that that's to be true. May your kingdom come soon. So <clears throat> I know it talks about it several spots in the Bible, but his kingdom is coming back here. And, and we're called to be ready for that. And so he's saying, Lord, I'm not scared of that. I'm ready. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What kind of world would this be if we were all doing exactly what God asked us to do? It would be a pretty good place, wouldn't it? We wouldn't, we wouldn't have to deal with some of these knotheads that we do. If we were, I wouldn't have been a knothead. <laughs> so... If we were always doing what God asked us to do, and this would be a special place, and we should be shooting for that. And it says, give us today the food we need. And look, I, I love a Whataburger too, and he's, I'm sure he's talking about physical food, but he's also talking about the spiritual food that we need. 
So give us today those things, whatever our body is needed to nourish it, either spiritually or physically, that he provide that. And he says, forgive us of our sins, which we all need forgiveness of those, some more often than others. Thank you very much. Um, but then he goes on and says, as we've forgiven those who sinned against us. It doesn't say, as we try to forgive those that sinned against us. It says, as we have forgiven. So that should be, that should be a given. You, if you want your sins forgiven, you're going to have to forgive the other people that have sinned against you. And then last he says, uh, don't let us yield to temptation. And I, liked it. I was thinking about this and thinking about when you're going maybe through Kerrville, right? And that, you see that light turn yellow, but you're pretty close still. And so you don't yield. Well, I don't yield. You, you give it a little extra gas, and as you're going under, you're looking like, oh, it's orange. Okay, I made it. You know, you, uh, you, you, you get through there. I wasn't yielding for it. I was going to cruise right on by it. And that's what he's saying. Don't let us yield to that temptation. Just go right by it and deliver us from the evil one because we know the devil's out there looking for us, trying to wreck us out. <clears throat> And then the last part in uh, 14, he says, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. So that's super important. He says that. He goes back and specifically identifies that. So you all remember that. Because I, I know it's hard to forgive some people for the things that they've done. I know, I know that there's things that people, people have done to me or to you or to our kids that it's hard to forgive but he doesn't tell us if he says do it all right so but i like the part in that where he says pray in private you don't have to make a big scene about it right just go and pray in private um the next thing i want to talk about is persistent prayer so in luke Chapter 11, I'm going to have lots of scripture. I, Dennis asked me to send him a scripture. I was like, oh, you ready? <clears throat> but I got a lot of it. And I don't expect y'all to all go there. Just, I just want to show you where it says in the Bible. And y'all can go back and, and look at these later. But starting uh, Luke 11, starting 1 through 5, he talks about that same prayer that Jesus tells us to pray. But then uh, in verse 5, he says, then teaching them more about prayer, he used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. I don't know how you borrow bread, but <clears throat> I want to borrow some bread. He says, uh, a friend of mine's just arrived for a visit, and I've got nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, hey, man, don't bother me. The door is locked for the night. My family and I are all in bed. I cannot help you. But I tell you this, though, he won't do it for friendship's sake. If you keep locking, uh, knocking on that door long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You know... I remember when I was a kid and there was something I wanted. If you just said, hey, Grandma, I want this, she, she would brush you off a little bit, you know. But if you kept pestering her long enough, you either got what you wanted or you got something else. But you got something at least. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but that's what he's telling us. How, you say you want something. How bad do you want it? Are you, or do you want it bad enough to be persistent about it and to keep coming back to me for it? Because not... Not everybody's prayers, I know mine, don't always get answered like that. And that's nothing against God. That don't mean that he can't, but they don't always. Maybe he wants you to be persistent about it so that you know that you really want it. Um, so persistent prayer. Now pray in faith. I'm going to jump to Mark chapter 11, starting in verse 22. Then Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it. You must believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. 
I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. But when you're praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against, so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Man, I, <clears throat> I pray that someday I will have enough faith to be able to pray a prayer that I could move a mountain. And I know Jesus could do it because he did it while he was here. And that's, I keep shooting for that. I'm striving for that, that level of faith to be able to pray that prayer. But I've got to keep trying and keep believing that when I pray for something, that he is going to give it to me. He goes back and reminds us again to forgive, that we have to forgive. Otherwise, those prayers, it's going to be hard to get those prayers answered. But, we, but those prayers all have to be rooted in a deep faith. Then next is earnest prayer. So we did, uh, they were doing a Bible study a while back, and it was on James. And I got to, to lead one of the Bible studies, and I was telling them how <clears throat> when I found out that James was Jesus' half-brother, it made me think of uh, this movie called Rush Hour. I, I think it's a funny movie. It's not all completely, you know, you don't let your kids watch it, but it's a pretty funny movie. <clears throat> and there's a guy in there, Chris Tucker, and he really makes me laugh. Uh, he, God blessed him with some humor. And uh, so he's talking in there about Jackie Chan, and it's his, and, okay, Chris Tucker's a black guy, and Jackie Chan's a Chinese guy, right? And he's telling him how, they're, how we're brothers. And uh, me and him got the same mama, he says. Well, I always think of that with James because James is Jesus' half-brother. And they got the same mama, right? They got different daddies because we know where Jesus, who Jesus' dad was. But, and uh, Joseph was James's dad. But I always think of that, and it just always makes me laugh every time. So uh, in James uh, chapter 5, verse 13 through 18, he's talking about the power of prayer. He says, are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. That's a simple answer. If any of you are suffering hearts, if anything's going wrong in your life, you've got a simple answer for you. You should pray. Are any of you happy? Then you should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. And I know, God bless y'all, some of y'all do that. You come up after service or any time and you come in front of these people and you ask them to pray over and God bless y'all, y'all are doing what the Lord's telling us to do. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick and the Lord will make you well. And if you've committed any sins, you will be forgiven. That's a tough one here. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. The earnest prayer, righteous person. What, so righteous, that's just being right with God, right? It's a big church word, but it just means being right with God. And how do you get right, right with God? First, you've got to forgive those that have sinned against you, and then you've got to ask for forgiveness of yours. That's how you can get right with God. But once you can do that, then your prayers become powerful. How about, um, how about Daniel. I, I like Daniel because that, that dude, he could pray. He was earnest in his prayers, so I'll set it up, you know, back whenever. So <clears throat> Daniel was in prison, well, captive of this king, and this king was having these dreams, and he, he couldn't figure out what they meant. And so he was talking to all his people and saying, hey, tell me what these dreams mean. And they couldn't do it. And so one guy says, hey, let me bring Daniel to you. He's, oh, his God has blessed him. Let, let me bring him. He can, I think he might be able to help you. And so Daniel goes and he, he tells him, hey, I need you to tell me what your dreams are. Right? And your first question would be, well, okay, so tell me the dream. Well, that ain't the deal. <laughs> you, you just tell me what I dreamed and what it means. And so Daniel says, okay. And he goes back and, and this is what he this is what he says in uh, Dan Daniel chapter 2, starting in verse 17. Then Daniel went home and told his friends, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, what had happened. He urged them to ask the God of heaven 
to show them his mercy by telling them the secret so that they would not be executed along with the other wise men of Babylon. That night the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision, and then Daniel praised the God of heaven. He said, praise the name of God forever and ever, for he has all wisdom and power. He controls the course of world events, and he removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. He reveals deep and mysterious things and knows what lies hidden in the darkness, though he is surrounded by light. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors, for you have given me wisdom and strength, and you've told me what, what we asked of you and revealed to us what the king demanded. That was an earnest prayer by Daniel, and he even brought his friends in on it and said, hey, guys, we need to be praying. And God answered him. How about devoted prayer? In Colossians chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Devote yourselves to prayer. What, what does that mean, to be devoted? To be completely committed to something, right? Completely committed. Daniel, again, in, in chapter 6, verse 10, <clears throat> that same king has has decided to build this big idol. And he tells everybody, well, when they play this song, you've got to go out there and pray to this idol that of, of me, of the king, to show your respect. So what happens in uh, Daniel 6, but when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and he knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with his windows open towards Jerusalem, and he prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to God. So what he didn't do was get a sign and get some buddies together and go march around in the street and, and make a big prayer to God and tell him that this is wrong, right? But he also didn't go home and hide in the closet or in the basement and, and pray. He did exactly what he always did, his same devoted prayer, three times a day with the window open, just like he always did. And God blessed him. It got sketchy for a minute there, right? He had, to, he had to hang out with the lions for a little while. But that didn't concern him either. Because he had been devoted prayer for a long time. So y'all uh, remember the story about Solomon. So Solomon was the son of King David. And when King David got old and was getting ready to die... That sounds harsh. When he was getting ready to pass on, he, um, so Solomon knows that he's, he's going to be the king, and he's kind of a young guy, and so he's a little bit nervous. So he's, he's, he starts praying to the Lord to ask him to help him, and, and he asks God for wisdom. And God was so proud of him, and he granted him with that wisdom, and he granted him with a whole bunch of other stuff that he didn't even have to ask for. And then later on, Solomon was blessed and was able to build the temple for God. And when he did that, so that's in uh, 1 Kings 8.22, if y'all look that up sometime. I'm not going to read it all because I'm fixing to tell you why I ain't going to read it all. But he, after he's done building that temple, he prays a prayer of, of dedication over the temple. And in this Bible, it is a whole page. It's a whole page just praying this dedication over the temple that he got to build for God. Some of y'all got Bibles with a lot bigger letters. It might be two pages, but it's one page long in the, in the uh, Learning the Ropes Bible. But you think about his dad, uh, David, he could pray too. So he, he helped set Solomon up for that. But you, you look in, in Psalms especially, but David knew how to pray, and in his prayer, he was always praising. He was really good at praising the Lord, and that's another way to pray is, is through praise. You think about, um, there's a lot of Psalms, and the last one is Psalms 150. It's the last, the last, book, uh, the last uh, Psalm in that book. And he says, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. 
Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. So, I can't play an instrument. But he says, even if you can't play an instrument, dance. Then he says, praise him with the strings and the flutes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Cymbals are, that's more my speed. Like, anybody can clang two things together, right? But he says, if that's all you can do, do it. Bang your cymbals together for me. Praise him with the loud clanging of cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. So those, as I was studying this, those were things that, that to me stood out as being important ways to pray and important things to focus on when I was praying. Have, so have y'all ever loaned money to somebody or given money to somebody? Right? You, have, you, have you ever had somebody who was in trouble and needed, just needed a little bit of help and you gave them a little money and said, hey, you know, God bless you, I hope this helps you, right? But it's different when you loan money to somebody, right? That's different because you don't loan money to somebody generally, especially if you don't have a whole lot of it. You don't loan money to somebody that you don't think is a good investment. Somebody that you don't think is going to take that and do something really good with it. So we spend more time and we place a lot of value on that, on somebody that we think is a good investment, that we would invest money in. When you, so when we take the time to study these things and we take the time to do these things, to pray these ways, we become a good investment. We become a good investment then for the kingdom of heaven. We make ourselves someone that God can really use. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, he says, Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. I think that's powerful because he's talking about praying in the Spirit. You know, that's, that's not a prayer from someone who's, who's always suffering, who's always having to pray for themselves to dig themselves out of their own hole. That's, that's someone who's... who's able to use the Spirit and learns how to use the Spirit and pray in the Spirit and can pray for other people and, and, and do powerful things with it beyond themselves. Because when God gave us the Holy Spirit, He expects us to use it. He expects us to use that Holy Spirit to learn how to use it. You know if Steele, if I tell Steele, I love, or Steve, man, I love music. I, I would be cool if I knew how to play music. And he, Steve says, oh, here you go. Take this guitar. Come back, I'll teach you how to use it. Oh, okay. But if I take that guitar home and I lean it against the wall, because I got one leaning against the wall and I can't play. <clears throat> and I never come back and Steve never teaches me. I'm no good. I, I, I was a bad investment, right? In Matthew, uh, in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus, I won't want to read the whole thing, I'm going to paraphrase it, but Jesus teaches a parable about three servants, all right? And it's hard to think of servants nowadays because it's little, three workers, okay? Three guys that work for, for Grady. They, uh, wake up, Grady. Three guys that work for <laughs> Grady. <laughs> three guys that work for him, and he's getting ready to go out of town. And so he calls these three guys to him, and he, and, uh, he gives the first guy five bags of silver, and that's even hard to think about now because <clears throat> you can't turn that stuff in no more and, and get your dollars out of it, hardly. But say he gives this first guy $500, and he says, take this and do something good with it. I'll be back. And he gets the next guy, and he gives him 200 and he says, take this and do something good with it. And the last guy, he gives him a $100 bill, says, do something good with this. And he leaves, and he comes back, and he calls them three boys up in front of him again, and he says, okay. What, what do y'all got for me? And the guy that he gave 500, he gives him $1,000 back. He says, here you go, I took you 500 and I turned it into 1,000. He says, man, good job. And the next guy, man, here's 400. I took you 200 and I turned it into four. Good job. And the last guy, he says, hey, what, what do you got? He gives him that 100 back and it's dirty. 
it's all it's all dirty because when that when the boss left he took that hundred and he he said i don't know what to do with this I, i'm gonna i'm gonna bury it here in the ground that way i don't lose it or screw it up i'm just going to bury it here in the ground and then when he got back he dug it up and gave it back to him that last guy wasn't a good investment actually he was he was un, he was so unhappy with him that he called him lazy which nobody likes to be called lazy but he didn't do anything with that gift. Listen to what he, what he orders him in, in, in 29 and 30. He says, To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Man, don't bury, don't bury that gift. I don't, I don't want to go where there's weeping and that. I can't even hardly watch a Hallmark movie because everybody's bawling, crying. It irritates me. Um, but look, <clears throat> nobody wants to do that. So let's take his words, uh, take these words of advice that he gives us and that, and that the Lord gives us in his word and we start using it to pray and to get closer to God and to start trying to become a better, a better investment for the kingdom. We take, take that gift of the Holy Spirit that he's given us and grow it. Grow it from one to two, from two to four to five to ten. Man, you can't do that if you bury it. You cannot do it if you bury it. When, so those guys are off right now at that retreat, but when Jeff comes back, I want y'all to remember this and tell him thank you because not that long ago, he was going through a tough time. And I, I don't... I don't talk to Jeff every day, and, and, and I don't see him all the time and get to hang out with him all the time, but I could tell. It was a tough time in his life. I could see it in his face. But we closed the doors to this church for a little while. When that virus hit and nobody knew what was going on or what it was about, they made a tough decision that they thought that they wanted to protect their brothers and sisters, and it weighed very heavy on them. Y'all, some of y'all don't, some of y'all do realize, but some of y'all don't, how heavy that weighed on him. But while we were out, he, he, he made a call and a, claim, uh, a request to the prayer family for 14 days of prayer. And I'm talking about every hour for 14 days. 24 hours a day, seven days a week for two weeks, somebody from this church was praying and nobody missed a second. I know I didn't. I, I would go a little bit over just in case somebody behind me was late because I didn't want to miss a second. But people were waking up at 3 a.m. in the morning. They might have to get up at 5, but if they were signed up for 3 a.m., they were up praying for a whole hour. And I don't know about y'all, but before that, I had never prayed for an hour straight. That's... I, it's a long time to pray when you ain't never prayed much more than over your food. You know, you get in a hurry praying over your food, or at least Jimmy says I need to get faster about it. Um, but, man, a lot of other people hadn't either. Once I started talking to people about it, it really changed their relationship and their prayer life, to praying for a whole hour. <clears throat> a lot of times I'd never done more than speak to him in passing. So it was special. That, that request that, that Jeff made, I want you all to thank him for it because I'm going to tell you what, it paid off. It, it returned in abundance. Just look, just turn around and look at, all, look at how blessed we are right now. Some people's churches aren't even open. Look at all these wonderful people that are here worshiping the Lord. And we're back. Yeah, I know. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. It's so awesome. Man, we're back on Wednesday nights. We're feeding people again. These kids are back learning and having fun. <clears throat> Look at our community. How blessed has this community been? Bandera, Hondo, Kerrville, Medina, right? He's kept us safe. He, those prayers that we prayed, and not missing a minute, it's not a coincidence. Because we were praying in private, and we were praying in faith. 
and we had earnest prayers, and we were devoted in those prayers. We had prayers of wisdom, and, and even though we were scared and we didn't know what to do, we were praising his holy name. We didn't let his, when we left this building and closed the doors, we didn't leave his spirit in here. We took him with us. We put him to work. And man, I'm, I'm so thankful for those abundant blessings that have returned to us. Y'all pray with me. Lord, thank you for, thank you for being you. Thank you for being the one and the only Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me, Lord. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for giving me the strength and the courage to forgive those that I needed to forgive. But God, thank you for blessing us. Thank you for making an investment in us, Lord. Lord, we're just doing our very best not to let you down. And if we're not doing as good as we should, God, give us the courage and the strength and the wisdom to do better because we need you more than anything. Lord, thank you. There's so many people out there that need your blessing right now, Lord, and I'm not going to name them all, but I've got a few that need some healing, Lord, and I pray you'll just put your hand over us. Thank you for that Holy Spirit, God, and let us, let us learn how to, to be a part of that. Let us figure out how to carry that with us everywhere we go, every word that comes out of our mouth to have the Holy Spirit have our back. Thank you so much, God. Thank you for your son. It's in his holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. <laughs> That's all I got. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. I'm, I, look, it is, I'm super excited and super blessed to see all these people here. It's awesome to see how everybody's come together. But look, lay pa if there's any lay pastors here that aren't, um, y'all come up. And if y'all need to be prayed for, please come up and talk to us, okay? It doesn't have to be anything crazy special. Just come up. We're, we'd love to pray with you.